Years ago, when I was backpacking through Western Europe, I was just outside Barcelona, hiking in the foothills of Mount Tibidabo. I came to a path in what emerged before me but Tibidabo Amusement Park, home to two roller coasters, a variety of family attractions, and let me just say, this park is a gem. On paper, it may not look like much. For those of you counting credits, their two roller coasters are family rides. Montagna Russa is actually pretty cool. I have a full review of that already up on the channel that I highly encourage you to check out. But what really makes this park is the setting. The park sits at about 1,600 feet in the air, or about 512 meters. It overlooks the entire city. You can see everything from there, including La Sagrada Familia, the Mediterranean Sea, the surrounding mountain range. It is stunning. We were even up there when sunset hit. Oh my gosh. That alone was worth the price of admission. But you know, this park also has a really cool history. It opened over 100 years ago, back in 1905. It's currently one of the oldest operating parks in the world. And they also have two rides that are over 100 years old. Unfortunately, we didn't have the chance to do either of them because they are closed. They have this really cool lookout tower that opened in 1921. Unfortunately, it was closed for wind, but they also have this cool inverted like tram experience. But in my opinion, the ride that's even cooler there is a replica of the first aircraft to fly from Barcelona to Madrid. It opened in 1928 and all it does is fly in a circle, but it's powered by its own propeller. It's super unique, anyone can ride it. And honestly, it's a little freaky knowing that you're just attached by this arm and at one point it takes you out over the edge. It's super cool. In a way, a lot of this park could be intimidating for those who are scared of heights because the whole thing is made up of five different levels. You start at the top and then you take all these different sloped pathways to get down to the bottom where there's also an elevator. You can also take stairs. So yeah, it's a bit of a chore if you're at the bottom level and you wanna go all the way back up to the top but it gives the place a lot of character. And I think that's what made it so memorable. I honestly didn't know a lot going into Tibidabo, but I was so impressed. This was my second time in Barcelona, the first time we skipped this place. We were like, eh, only two roller coasters is probably not that cool. No, I'm here to tell you, if you're visiting Barcelona, you should go here. Even if you don't even like rides, the view alone is outstanding. I'm convinced that just about anyone could go here and have a good time. So let's walk through the whole experience of going to Tibidabo. First, I want to mention how you get here. We actually took a funicular up to the top of the mountain and then a bus directly from that station to the park. That was the one we took. There is a funicular that is attached to Tibidabo. We took that one back down to the bottom to a different station. But the bottom line is you don't have to drive up here if you don't want to. You'll know you've arrived to Tibidabo when you see this massive church right outside the entrance. It is so iconic, the architecture is beautiful, and it's one of the main identifying points when you're in Barcelona and you're looking out trying to see the park. Just look for the big church on top of the mountain. Now, this is not a free-to-enter park. Entrance is 35 euros, or about 37 US dollars, so it's not super expensive. I think it's a reasonable price for what you get. The first attraction you'll see is that big lookout tower. Almost looks like one of those skyscraper attractions. You also see these big blocks that spell out Tibidabo. So cool, great photo op. Up on that first level is also a carousel. There's that plane I was talking about. Also right near the entrance is this really good frozen yogurt place. We got these incredible waffles there, highly recommend. And then you can start making your way down to the bottom across some of these ramps. One of the attractions that I think is a must do is the Kruger Hotel. Yes, Tibidabo has a year-round haunted house and it is incredible. I jumped so hard, spoiler alert if you don't wanna know what's inside, but everything was so detailed and we got to this room where it looked like there were a bunch of dolls, including a Chucky doll. And it started to move its head a little and I thought it was like an animatronic or a cool effect and I'm like, oh, that's creepy. And then it stood up, it was literally a person. I absolutely freaked out. It might have been the most I've ever jumped in a haunted house. I went all of Halloween Horror Nights not getting scared like that, but all it took was going to some random park outside of Barcelona to get me to jump, so bravo, Tibidabo. But if you're not into scares, there are some much more tame attractions. As you start making your way towards the bottom, there's this really cool fun house themed to fairy tales. I'm probably gonna butcher this, so I apologize in advance. It's called Castel dels Contes, but it was a really cool walkthrough. Anyone can do it. I appreciated the level of theming. It's probably more designed for kids, showing a lot of those classic grim fairy tales, but it was unique, so I was glad we did it. When you get there towards the bottom, that's also where you'll find the entrances to the two roller coasters. You have Tibidabo Express, which is a Zamperla powered coaster, and then Montagna Russa, which is a Vacoma that opened in 2008. Has one of the best views from a first drop that I've ever seen. At one point, the park was home to another roller coaster. It actually closed in 2009. It was also called Montagna Russa. It was a Zyklon Galaxy located towards the top of the park. Didn't really do a whole lot, but they did leave a car from the attraction sitting out for a great photo op. A couple other notable attractions include a Wave Swinger, a 4D Cinema, 
frog hopper, pirate ship, bumper cars. There's even a museum. A lot of cool quirky stuff, all of which give this park so much character. So in the end, I definitely recommend a visit to Tibidabo. It was honestly one of my highlights from visiting the area. The place just had a really happy vibe. Heck, they even have their own theme song. Tibby Tibby Dabo, Tibby Tibby Dabo. It's like really catchy. I just can't sing. I even even say the food is good. We actually ate just outside the park entrance at this little restaurant. It seemed like there weren't a ton of options in the park. It was mainly just a couple like stands here and there. But we also went in December when it was cold and so we wanted to eat inside. But I think if you're a fan of theme parks, a fan of culture and good views, Tibby Dabo gives you a little bit of everything. Not saying you necessarily need a full day here. We did end up spending more time at this park than I think we originally expected. Part of us were thinking, oh, maybe we'll be here for like two hours. We were there for at least double that. There's more to do than we expected. I wouldn't say anything there was like a must-do experience. I understand it doesn't have the same draw as a place like Port Aventura. So at the end of the day, I probably am more likely to go back to Port Aventura than Tibidabo. Not saying this park is like a one and done. Maybe for some people it is. But I think if you have a flexible schedule and are looking for cool opportunities and things to do in the area, I absolutely recommend this place. I think you'll have a great time. So let me know down in the comments below if you've been to Tibidabo Amusement Park, what you thought of it. And of course, stay tuned for more park reviews here at Coaster Studios. And I'll see you next time.